16.1 was about engine. 16.2 is an opportunity to showcase your strength in the squat clean. Yeah. Impress us not with strength in isolation, impress us with strength while maintaining a high heart rate and dealing with multiple elements. 16.2 is 25. Oh, no. Toe to bar. And 50. Double unders. Plus 15 squat cleans at 135 for the men and 85 for the women. If you cannot complete 25 toe to bar, 50 double under, and 15 squat cleans in four minutes, your score is the total amount of reps you complete in that duration, and your workout stops at that point. If you can complete all of this in four minutes, you get an additional four minutes to complete 25 toe to bar, 50 double unders, 13 squat cleans at 185 for the men, 115 for the women. If you cannot complete all of this in eight minutes, your score is the total reps you complete in that duration. If you can complete all of this in eight minutes, you get an additional four minutes <laughs> to complete 25 toe to bar, 50 double unders, and 11 squat cleans at 225 for the men, 145 for the women. If you cannot complete that in 12 minutes, your score is the number of reps you do in that time. If you can complete all of this in under 12 minutes, you get an additional four minutes. To complete 25 toe to bar, 50 double unders, nine squat cleans at 275. For the men, 175 for the women. If you cannot complete all of that in 16 minutes, your score is the reps you complete at the 16 minute mark. If you can complete all of that in 16 minutes, you get an additional four minutes to complete 25 toe to bar, 50 double unders, seven squat cleans at 315. And 205 for the women. If you cannot complete that in 20 minutes, your score is the reps you complete at the 20 minute mark. If you can complete all of this in under 20 minutes, your score is your total, total time at the point where you finish the seventh rep of the 315 clean and jerks. And you're probably a bad motherfucker if you get that far. For example, if it takes you 1830 to do, to do all of this, your score is 1830. A couple notes, if you finish this set in under, let's say it takes you two minutes, two and a half minutes. You do not have to stop at the four minute mark or wait till the four minute mark. You can continue on and you have that extra time. You never have to stop. You can com continue to work. Another important fact is you also don't have to change your own plates. You can have multiple bars set up or you can have someone else change, change the plates for you. 16.2 is an opportunity 
to show us how strong you are, you just have to do a lot of work first. I mean, I'm a little bit torn. I wanted to see heavy loading on the barbell, but I just wanted a little bit more time to work with it. So I don't know, Dave gives, Dave takes away. There's lots of stuff for your brain hole on this workout. So let's take a look at the workout standards. For 16.2 to, to count, it needs to look like this. Every repetition of toes to bar starts with the athlete hanging at full extension and the heels behind the vertical plane that the pull-up bar creates. The repetition is counted when both feet touch the pull-up bar at the same time between the hands. As long as the feet make contact inside the hands, any grip is permitted. For every repetition of the double under, the rope must pass forwards around the athlete's body. Each double under repetition must have the rope pass around the athlete's body twice. Each repetition of the squat clean begins from the ground. The athlete pulls the barbell from the ground, receives it in a front squat, and finishes by standing to full extension of the hips and knees with the barbell racked across the front of the body and the elbows forward of the bar. Your workout is over when your time cap expires and you failed to complete the work required to earn more time. Your score is the total number of repetitions completed. So that's what 16.2 has to look like in order for it to count, man. There's a lot to deal with in there. Back inside the Update Studios, Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood. You haven't had a lot of time to sort of kick this around in your heads now, but when you see that, what is the crux of 16.2? I, I, I can't even jittery. Stand, I can't stand still <laughs> if you're learning about it. I think it's so easy to see what 16.2 just got announced as and just see the 315-pound barbell and all this, this massive mm -hmm. weight. I don't think that's the deal. I think it's those sets of 25 toes yep. to bar is innocent. He just wrote them on the board and then we didn't, we didn't talk <laughs> right. about them much. I think those are going to tear people up mm -hmm. in a way that is going to prevent a lot of us from getting to the barbell. Right. Absolutely. I think people are going to have to find a way to break up these toes to bar evenly mm -hmm. to not lose too much time, but save your grip and save your midline. Because oh, if those yeah. go away and you try to hit a heavy squat clean, like Josh Bridges says, it's, you're going to look like a set of mashed potatoes doing that. <laughs> For the first time ever, we are doing a live open announcement from inside of the garage. Usually they're from affiliates or maybe a smaller venue. And that's appropriate because CrossFit did start in a garage. Now it grew because of everything that's going on on the affiliate side and all of those that have popped up all over the world. But CrossFit is still alive and well and going strong inside of people's houses. In CrossFit, it's not about where but how. And then over here you can see is our, this is our wall ball tree. There's a couple red dots up there for the wall ball mark. To achieve elite fitness, you don't need fancy equipment or a lot of space. The first CrossFit Journal article told people how to turn their garages into world-class fitness facilities. Thousands heeded the call. Now, men and women gather in parks, garages and carports, basements, barns, commercial gyms, storage lockers, martial arts academies and universities, and on military bases. Even the reigning fittest man on earth began his CrossFit journey in his own house. Today, CrossFit continues to encourage people to get the car out of the garage, grab some weights, call some friends, and start a journey towards elite fitness. And Pat, you've lived this yourself. You know, it's not necessarily about location. It's just really about intensity. I don't talk the talk, Sean. You know, I walk the walk. This is a <laughs> lifestyle for yep. me. Yeah, the best example of my, from my personal life I can think of is myself and Ian Wittenberg a couple years ago took a motorcycle trip, mm -hmm. 120 days from Montana down to Chile and South America. And we hit a lot of affiliates, but the overwhelming majority of the time we were working out in the middle of nowhere with whatever random equipment that we could find. And we just programmed something different each day that made sense, and we we maintained a lot of our capacity. And that just speaks to the efficacy of CrossFit, really, because yeah. we have we have cops, firefighters training at their stations. We have military personnel all over the world training at remote areas, and really, it speaks back to what we're 
shooting for mm -hmm. with this fitness methodology, and that's a, a fitness that is broad, general, and most importantly, inclusive, and the garage gym speaks to that inclusivity. Yeah, of course, there are tons of garage gyms all across the world, but the one that matters most tonight is in Candler, North Carolina, and it belongs to a man by the name of Joel Hartzler, and he is standing by with Rory McKernan. Joel, there's Dave Castro, there's Dan Bailey, Bjork Finn. Look at your garage, man. Like, in a million years, did you expect that this would ever happen? No, not, not at all. Not in a million years. How long have you been doing CrossFit? Uh, I've been a member at CrossFit Asheville for about four years now. Okay, and uh, so of thousands and thousands of garages, you guys were selected. So tell me, what did you do to make yourself stand out? Anything? Uh, when I saw the post requesting uh, people to post Instagram pictures of your garage, I just went and took a picture, put it up. Okay, this garage, ever going to be the same again? I mean, we're going to have two of the top athletes in the world working out. You're going to use it, or you're just going to never wash anything ever again? Uh, we'll, we'll clean up the sweat when they're done, but um, it'll never be the same, for hey, sure. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome hosts. Thanks, Joel. You bet. Thanks, Ro. Let's talk about strategy now as we get closer to kicking this thing off. These are two elite athletes, so their strategy will be different than everyone else's. How do they have to attack this? I think the four minutes is very deceptive. I think it's mm -hmm. very short. These guys, I think you're going to see the 50 double unders is not a big mm -hmm. deal. The 25 toes to bar, I think we're going to see some maybe one unbroken set, but no more than that. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, one or two quick shakes off the bar mm -hmm. makes more sense in the long run. This kind of reminds me of 15.1, what we saw last year with Rich Froning, where Pretty early on, he decided to break up his toes to bar and it paid dividends at the end. I think some of these athletes you might, might see 15 and 10, maybe two 10s and a, a quick five just mm -hmm. to save their grip. So when they get to that barbell, they can rip off a few chunks to buy themselves some time because the 135 should be light to them. They should handle the 185. But if they can buy themselves some time, you know, with not having to wait to that mm -hmm. four minute threshold, it'll definitely pay off in the heavier barbell. What does Dan Bailey like about 16.2? Ooh, well, I mean, he probably, when he first saw the first four minutes, he's like, yes, it's a sprint. No, it's not a sprint. He can move the weight. Uh, I think he's going to be happy when he gets to the barbell. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think Dan's challenge is getting there. I think the toes to bars are going to be a killer. Yeah. I'm actually going to say the toes to bar is what he likes. Last year, he had one of the top five scores in 15.1A worldwide. So I think he's actually pretty strong for his weight. He had one of the top cleans for per body weight last year uh, at the game. So... I think this is a pretty good workout for him if he can just hold on. What is Goodmanson like? Uh, I think the opposite. I think Goodmanson likes the toes to bar. You know, when he was younger, don't want to go way back in the day, but he's still young. He was a gymnast for nine years, so I think he's got a lot of that core midline work just built in there. His strength numbers are very similar to Dan, so I think he'll just have an easier time getting to the barbell. I think the expanding time domain for, for Bjorgman in particular, as, as it gets along, mm -hmm. efficiency pays off. Bjorgman is a technician when it comes to movement, and I think that's going to pay off when you've hit the right amount of squat cleans at the right technique over time. When it gets heavy, he's just going to be able to pull under that bar. Can anyone out there finish this whole thing and get through seven squat cleans at 315? Uh, <laughs> I mean, no one jumps into my mind. I honestly think... That set of 275, 9 at 275, we'll see a decent amount of the top level people mm -hmm. get there. But will somebody touch that? Somebody might touch the okay. 315 bar, but I don't think they'll finish it. Let's go to picks. Who do you like now that you know the workout? I'm sticking to my guns. I'm saying Goodmanson. Okay. This is his night. I'm going to stick with, uh, with Dan Bailey. You know, he's used to working out in unfamiliar places, so I'm going to give it to him. Okay. It's time to make some history. First time ever, a live open announcement from a garage gym in Candler, North Carolina. The third fittest man on earth, Jorvan Carl Gumitson, taking on the fourth fittest man on earth from 2015, Dan Bailey. To get things kicked off, let's send it out to the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Three, two, one, go! 16.2 is underway. Sean Woodland and Pat Sherwood are going to bring you the action here from the studio. And we start in the first four minute window with 25 toes to bar, then 50 double unders, and 15 squat cleans at 135 pounds. You know, I, I've rethought it even since we just spoke a second ago, and I don't know if I would even do this first set unbroken because, much like Tommy said, it's a long 20 minutes and you want to save that grip. So, but hey, they look like they're going for it. Keep an eye on the top of the screen. The athlete who is leading will have his name highlighted in blue. The athlete who is trailing will be in red. 
and the number in the white box by the athlete who is trailing will indicate the number of reps that athlete is behind. Both men off the bar and onto their first set of 50 double unders. Now this is different than other workouts that we've seen like this, especially last year, the overhead squat chest to bar pull up workout where you had to wait you couldn't start until a certain time. Now you can start as soon as you're done, and that's big. Right, an excellent point there. For these guys, maybe they're thinking, all right, I'm going to get out one set of 25 toes to bar, get through these 15 squat things that they consider light mm -hmm. at 135 pounds because they're going to want that time later on. A lot of us mere mortals, we might want to break a little bit earlier than they are. Mm -hmm. Dan Bailey going singles here. He's the first man to the 135-pound barbell. Bjorn Gubinson right behind him. And we're not even a minute 30 into this first four-minute window. For all the wonderful CrossFit fanatics at home, pay attention to this. The best in the world, number three and number four, mm -hmm. have not linked together a single squat clean. And for these guys, I looked at their overall top end numbers. This is about 38 to 39 percent of their one rep max, and they're not even doing a double. Not even halfway through this first four-minute window, it ends with 15 squat cleans at 135. If they get through this, and we're assuming they will, the next four-minute window will feature 11 squat cleans, I'm sorry, 13 squat cleans at 185 pounds. They're going to be through this round very, very quickly, and I think it's a smart play for them because these bars are going to get incredibly heavy. There's a big difference between 15 at 135 and the very next round, 13 at 185. That's an entirely different ballpark. Dan Bailey with two remaining and now one. Gumason is just one rep behind him. So Bailey getting through this first round in about two minutes, 24 seconds. His time cap is now eight minutes, and he can get right to work again. 25 toes to bar, 50 double unders, then back to the barbell, this time 185 pounds, and you don't have to change your own weight. You may not have heard Dave Castro say that, but you can have other people change your weights. Bailey right to work on those 25 toes to bar. Now Goodmanson on round two as well. Now th look at look at Goodmanson's legs. Just straight, obviously he's got some good flexible hamstrings, making it look very efficient there. Dan's a little more crunched up with the bent knees, and I think in the long run, it's gonna be a little more taxing for him, but they are holding on to this bar, frankly, I expected them to drop down a little sooner. A little more surprising maybe that they didn't break these up when they broke up the squat cleans. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're the ones, they number three and four in the mm -hmm. world. I'm, I'm just sitting here watching, but I'm thinking the toes to bar sets so a 25. Okay, all right, Dan, nope, he knocked them all out. I just think that's going to bite him in the butt a little bit later on. Bailey onto his second set of 50 double unders, and then a 185-pound barbell will await him. Again, both of these men have extended their time cap to eight minutes. Gubinson falling further behind, but he is still okay here. Plenty of time, about four and a half minutes to go before they hit that eight minute mark. Oh yeah, I mean, right now I'm considering this an absolute dead heat. And Goodmanson, he looks nice and calm, tripping the rope, no need to panic, you know, plenty of time. There's Dan looking over, most likely at the clock. These guys are experienced competitors. And right about now, they're still doing fine, but they're probably feeling that heart rate elevate a bit. Dan Bailey has opened up a significant lead here on Bjorben Gubinson, but all that matters for Gubinson is that he gets the work done that he needs to get done inside of eight minutes. And we are halfway to that mark, and once again, Dan Bailey going singles. He has 13 at 185 pounds that he needs to complete. And Castro said it earlier, you know, you're going to have to earn your heavy weight. Bjorgren's top clean is 355 pounds, Dan's is 350, so they're within five pounds of each other's number one rep. Bailey still going singles, and now Bjorgren Gubinson onto that 185-pound barbell, and he looks a little more composed now than just Bailey. He looks a little more composed, and he's just got a better overall lifting position, shoulder flexibility, squats a little more upright. You know, Dan's got those massive pecs and arms. He's trying to move that barbell <laughs> around. It's almost a hindrance. Bailey at 171 total reps. Gubinson is now three back of him. Eight minutes is the key time cap here for that both of these men need to get these squat cleans done. If they do that, then it's back to the pull-up bar for 25 more toes of bar. 50 double unders, and then the weight, this is where we start getting real. It's 11 at 225 pounds. Yeah, and I, I expect them to make it through the 225, and I want to see how they do with the 275 pound barbell. Dan's such a veteran, I mean, five games appearances under his belt, the Bjorgren's too, but Bjorgren again is just looking, he's not flustered whatsoever. Gubinson is now cut into Dan Bailey's lead, he's just two reps behind, Bailey with two to go before he closes out his 11 at 185, and Gubinson with four to go, as Adrian Bosman is his judge in the red knit cap. 
not to bring back anything painful, but you remember what Goodmanson did to us at the games. Made us look yes. foolish. Mm -hmm. Caught us off guard. Yes, he did. We're paying particular attention to where you are right now, Bjorkman. Dan Bailey is now done with the second round, so his time cap has increased to 12 minutes. It's back to the pull-up bar. 25 toes to bar, 50 double unders, 11 squat cleans at 225 pounds. I just have to think that we're going to see a break on this set of 25 toes to bar. I mean, I could be wrong. It happens once or twice a year, but I'm thinking 25. <laughs> good Lord. Bailey continued to crank away at those toes to bar. This is his third set. He went unbroken on his first two. Goomans and taking a little more rest now. They both have about five minutes, 40 seconds before that 12 minute time cap that they've extended into to get all the work done. And Bailey has broken up his toes to bar. And I think that's a very smart play. I only hope that it, when we reflect on this workout that maybe he shouldn't have, you know, he thinks maybe I should have done that in the second round, you know, instead of going two sets of 25 unbroken. Goobinson taking significant rest now as Dan Bailey is working towards the end of his third set of toes to bar. And now it's 50 more double unders that he has a 13 rep lead on Bjorven Goobinson. Dan is, again, he's got so much experience in this arena. He has done a head-to-head -head open announcement times in his life. Twice against Rich Froning, once against Scott Panchuk. He's no stranger to this environment. However, he's 0-3. Mm -hmm. So he would really like to claim this as victory number one. Goomanson still has not completed his 25 toes bar. And Dan Bailey is going to get to the barbell, it looks like, before Goomanson might even complete his third round of 25 toes to bar. And if you are this level of athlete, 50 double unders, it's going to take you, let's say, about 30 seconds. So right now, if Goodmanson gets on that rope, he should only be about half a minute behind Dan. Bailey to the 225-pound barbell. He has until the 12-minute mark to do 11 squat cleans at that weight as Goodmanson is finally onto the rope. He has 50 double unders to go. Such a smart play by these guys. I mean, they know as soon as they heard the workout, I need a lot of time at the end because it's not going to get bad slowly. It's going to happen really fast. And I think Dan is experiencing that, experiencing that right now with the 225 bar. Goomanson chipping away at those double unders. Four minutes to go before we hit the 12 minute time cap. And Dan Bailey is methodically going to work on that 225 pound barbell. Bjorvin Goomanson will be joining him momentarily. And historically, strength was one of the things that hurt Bjorvin a little bit at the games last year, the one rep max, heavy DT. But he has put in some work in the offseason. Again, he's got his one rep max clean within five pounds of Dan, actually five pounds heavier. Dan Bailey with a five rep lead on Bjorvin Goobinson, who at 225 looks really good on that first rep. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, Bjorvin could just be playing the long game. You know, maybe he thinks that Dan is going out a bit too fast. We know Dan's a sprinter, and so he's trying not to get caught up in his pace and just run his own race. I was going to say, it's very easy in this setting to get caught up in someone else's game. And it looks like Bjorvin Carl Gubinson is executing his game plan. Just about almost three minutes to go now before we hit the 12-minute time cap. And Dan Bailey is going to get in well inside of that. Just four reps to go now. This time cap will be increased then to 16 minutes, and the barbell will then move to 275 pounds. And these guys, I mean, we're watching this thing for the first time. We're going to go home. We're going to nuke it. We're going to replay it, see how long they rested the sets of the toes bar. And people will dissect this and do better performances. They had about 10 minutes to think about it, figure out what they thought was appropriate, and they dove right into it. They're crushing it right now. Bailey with one to go at 225. Goobinson is now four reps back. Dan Bailey will close out round number three, extend his time cap to 16 minutes. And once again, it's back to the pull-up bar. 25 more toes to bar, 50 double unders, and nine squat cleans at 275 as Goobinson now has four reps to go. I mean, he's finished with the first three rounds, sub 10. He is cooking. I am, I'm a little bit concerned mm -hmm. that old Sprinter Bailey is going out a bit fast here. Goodmanson, you know, it's easy to think, oh, he's losing, he's losing, right. but he could be winning in the long run. I'm really impressed with the way that Goodmanson is moving that barbell. He's not doing it nearly as quickly as Dan did, obviously, but he does look smooth on these reps, but this rest time might catch up with him. Less than two minutes to go before he hits that 12-minute time cap, and Dan Bailey is already in to round number four. 
There's also a big difference between your one rep max. That doesn't necessarily translate to you moving 50, 60, 70, or 80 percent of your one rep over and over again, that kind of stamina. So that's going to play a huge part in this workout. Gumminson is done, and he has extended his time cap now to 16 minutes. Dan Bailey is off of the pull-up bar and breathing rather heavily as he works on his now fourth set of 25 toes to bar. Gumminson collecting himself as well, and now you really start to watch the clock. I think we are in the workout mm. right now. The 275 pound barbell, which is a respectable one rep max right. clean. For most people that have been doing CrossFit for years, these guys are going to attempt to rep it out in an open workout. Dan Bailey's through 25 and now on to the jump rope as he will eventually stare down the 275 pound barbell and try to perform nine squat cleans before we hit the 16 minute mark. Gubinson's still on his toes to bar. You know, I haven't had a chance to watch Goodmanson train, but I can say I've been lucky here at HQ. Dan's come up a couple mm -hmm. times. I've seen him, what his training days look like, how he eats, how serious he takes us. And I'll tell you what, he is podium hungry yeah. in his sixth year. So, hey, maybe this pace isn't too fast. He's just a better athlete than the last time I saw him throw down at the Open. He is leaving Jorvan Goomanson well behind him, and Goomanson is coming up on about four minutes to go to complete all the work and is taking multiple rests on those toes to bar. Bailey almost done with his set of 50, and then he'll be back to the barbell for nine squat cleans at 275 pounds. Uh, we're belting up. We're belting up, Sean. You know, I usually belt up for 275. <laughs> Anything below that's I'm child's belt up for play. 95. You can't. <laughs> I don't, you know, people need to realize all these things hurt each other. Mm -hmm. The toes to bar, burn the grip in the forearms, your lats and your abdominals. Then you jump rope, you can't breathe, your abs are tight, your shoulders are burning. Yeah. And it still hits your forearms a bit, and then you need all of those very things in addition to leg strength to move the barbell. Dan Bailey is done with one squat clean at 275. The time cap is 16 minutes. Jorvan Carl Gumminson working on his set of 50 double unders and he will try to join Bailey at that 275 pound barbell. I'll tell you what, I think Dan's got it. I'm sure he's hurting. I'm sure he's in a tremendous amount of pain, but what I'm looking at is once he catches the barbell in the bottom of the front squat below parallel, what's the bar speed on the squat when he stands up? Is it this struggle with shaky legs? And he's still pretty fast out of the bottom. Yeah. I think he's got a great shot of getting to that 315 pound bar. Three minutes to go before we hit the 16 minute time cap. Bailey trying to extend this into a 20 minute workout. And that's the terrible thing about this for the better athletes. Like the better you do, the more you're gonna suffer. Right, God. inside the mind of Dave Castro. <laughs> if you're fit, the more I'm gonna give you an opportunity to not only prove it, but you're gonna have to suffer to do it. It's about two and a half minutes now before we hit the 16 minute time cap. Gubinson is on his 275 pound squat cleans and continues to look smooth. Bailey is well into his set. They have nine total to complete. And then one final round, but both men are slowing significantly. Yeah, Dan's bent over, breathing hard, but still, the bar speed, once he catches it, is good. And so's Goodmanson. He's a few reps behind, but the squat still looks strong. Bailey threw another rep. Almost two minutes he has. Looks like two squat cleans to go. The judge's hand in the air indicating the number of reps that he has left. So Dan Bailey wow. might get into the final round here. Gubinson with five left, so this is doable for both of these guys. I am 100% I am impressed. They, no pun intended, are setting the bar extremely high for the rest of the athletes that are going to check this out and hit it over the course of the next couple of days. The three, I, I, I wasn't sure if we'd see them break into the 350. Yeah. This is incredible. Bailey... Hitting another one, and that's the last one in the round for Dan Bailey. 20 minute time cap now, and that's going to be it. And Dan Bailey will have a chance to get to the 315 pound barbell. Four to go for Bjorvin Gubinson. He has to get it done inside of 16 minutes. Dan bought himself about an extra 90 seconds. He finished, you know, he could have taken all the way up to 16 minutes, but nope. He's going to really be happy that he has that extra time. Bailey doing smaller sets now on the toes of our Gubinson with about 60 seconds to go before he hits his time cap. Dan just needs to do what he's doing, maintain this pace. You want to get to that final barbell or whatever barbell you wind up, you know, for the people at home with as much time as possible. Gubinson only has one to go, so he's going to wow. join Dan Bailey in the final round. He's going to cut it a little close, but it looks like he is going to make it. Bailey with a significant lead on Gubinson. 
But now Bjorven Carl Gumitsen has made it into the final round. I mean, for a guy that, you know, my problem is strength. I need to get I mean, stronger. He is under fatigue, under duress, with all the pressure of the world looking at just these two guys work out, is going to make it to the 315-pound barbell. We know this thing is going to end at the 20-minute mark. What we don't know is how far both of these athletes are going to get. Seven squat cleans at 315 pounds. And Dan Bailey is almost done with another 25 toes apart, and it is criminal how easy these guys are making this look this late in the game. I'm impressed. i got to eat my words a little bit. I was certain that old hot-out-of-the-gates <laughs> Bailey had done that again, and even though he did have the faster pace, it's looking like it was the right pace for him. Mm -hmm. Dan Bailey now on to the jump rope. Jorvan Gubinson looking pretty good here on these toes to bar. He knows it's now or never. I mean, there's, there's no reason to hold back on the toes to bar or the double unders. Every rep of that 315-pound barbell for the top games athletes is going to be huge separation on the leaderboard. Bailey cranking through and looking good on the double unders. 20-minute time cap. That's what he has to get done. Seven squat cleans at 315 pounds. Five toes to bar to go for Bjorven Gumanson. Then he'll get to work on the jump rope. I don't care what your one rep max clean is for everyone at home. Break out your phones and figure out what about 90% of that is, because that's what Dan Bailey is about to attempt right here. This final bar is 90% of his one rep max, which is usually when you're, you know, you're fresh, mm -hmm. you're well rested, you had a good meal, you listen to your favorite song. He is huffing and puffing and destroyed and about to attempt 90%. Just inside three minutes to go before we hit the 20 minute cap on this workout, Dan Bailey. If he can complete seven squat cleans in three minutes at 315 pounds, he will finish this workout. Wow, I can't Jeez. believe it. What is, is down for Bailey? That is monstrously strong this far into the workout. Two and a half to go. Gumanson trying to wrap up his 50 double unders and then try to get as many reps as he can at 315. I did not expect this. No, and again, I'm sure Dan is in agony, but once he receives the barbell, he looks strong coming up. Keep those elbows up, Dan. There you go. Two down for Bailey. Five to go. And we're approaching two minutes to go until the time cap. I'm going to have my mind blown if Dan can knock out five more of these things before the clock is 20 and actually finish this workout. I mean, it's cold there in Candler. You can see the steam coming off of Dan Bailey. And he is working hard. Now, Gumanson is on the barbell. And that looked impressive. I, I am 100% impressed. Dan looks a bit stronger this far into the game, and he's got the momentum of knowing that he's ahead. But Goodmanson getting under that weight is no small feat. Of course, it wouldn't be a Dan Bailey workout if there wasn't some slobber coming off of him and a leave, whole bunch of sweat. Leave a little something for the garage <laughs> to clean up afterwards. I don't think he's going to mop that spot. <laughs> Bailey, four to Come go. On, get back on. 90 it. seconds before we hit the 20-minute time cap and still looking so strong on the front squat, I can't believe it. Right now in his head, he's doing a lot of complicated math, mm -hmm. physics, what's my heart rate? How many more <laughs> can I get in? I've got a minute 15. Coming up to the 19 minute mark. 20 minutes is gonna be it for 16.2 for both of these men, and Dan Bailey currently has a two rep lead over Bjorn van Gumansen, the man who finished third at the CrossFit Games. Dan Bailey was one spot behind him in fourth place. And Bailey, in five trips of the Games, has not been on the podium. He's hoping 2016 is finally the year he does it, and he gets another good rep. Uh, both of these guys battling at the 315, honestly, I didn't think that we would see this. If one of them got through the 275, I was going to be stoked. Bailey is calling on the crowd. He has two to go, 40 seconds wow. left before we hit the 20 minute time cap and Dan Are Bailey is one me? rep away from finishing this workout. I, I, I didn't think it would be done. Dan Bailey is going to set the bar incredibly high for everyone else to chase. 30 seconds, now 25. Now Gumanson with three reps to go. Dan, Dan Bailey's going to make one on there, run Dan. at this thing. Give us what we want. Give us the victory. And Dan Bailey will get it! Dan Bailey has finished 16.2! I... <laughs> right now, Froning is just shaking his head. <laughs> Bjorvin Gumanson, I mean, had it not been for Dan Bailey finishing that, that would have been incredible, but Dan Bailey is going to get the win. He completes all 430 reps inside the 20-minute time cap. And finally, after 
three losses in head-to-head -head open competition. You can't hold that he over is, his head anymore. He is victorious. He won the Open in 2011, and now he has his first head-to-head -head victory in an open announcement. It's a heck of a victory. Dan Bailey by a couple of reps over Bjorn Gulmanson. Bailey is pumped up, and he should be. I mean, we just sat here, and I, I looked at this thing going, oh, no one's going to finish that. And then, boom, right out of the gates, someone does it. So we'll have to reevaluate that. I think quite a few men are going to be able to get through this whole thing. Uh, yes, I have to take a step back. And I, not that they made it look easy, but I didn't think we would see one finish it and one get within just a couple reps that strength is not his mm. thing. Yep, I, I think there's going to be a lot more people now chasing times to beat in yeah. this workout. And give credit to Dan Bailey, too, because he obviously knew the pace. I was a little worried for him, too, as I know you were, that he came out of the gate so hot on some of those. Yeah, that traditionally, that's what he does. I mean, self-admitted. Mm -hmm. But that's what makes him such a dangerous athlete, he, is he has the potential to win events if it winds up in his wheelhouse. There's the score. Dan Bailey, 19 minutes, 49 seconds. He completes all... 430 reps. Bjorgren Carl Gumansen just two reps back at 428. What impressed you the most now about both of these athletes? Let's start with Dan Bailey. Dan Bailey in his quest to make it onto the podium, you know, he's one of arguably the best crossfitters mm -hmm. of all time. Been to the games five times and has never finished outside the top ten. And now it's just solidifying the fact that, you know, he programs for mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. He's obviously being very honest about what he needs to work on and that training is paying off. I mean, to show up there with the pressure of that open mm -hmm. announcement, everyone watching, just two people, have to just pace it real quick in my head, I hope this works, or modulate right. it while it happens. He just he impressed the, the heck out of Other me. Other side, Bjorgen Carl Gumisen. We talked about it earlier. Which one are we going to see coming into 2016? The one who finished on the podium or the one who you know, kind of, I don't want to say struggled, but finished towards the back of the games in 2014? Now it looks like we're going to see the guy in 2015 and then some. I think this only solidifies the case that Goodmanson is such a dangerous athlete because he doesn't win events, but mm -hmm. he can do it all. It doesn't matter what it is. And okay, he didn't win this event, but he was two reps away from it in one of his not wheelhouse movements. That's what made him mm -hmm. surprise us at the games last year is just, right. I can do it all. And he seems to be right back on that track. That was a 20 minute workout, but it seemed to move pretty quickly. So let's take one more look back at some of the key moments and to take us through some critical points of 16.2. Here's Tommy Marquez. Thanks, Sean. No doubt Dan Bailey's pace to start the workout gave him a little bit of an edge, but where it paid huge dividends was at the end of the fourth round of that workout, about 14, 14 and a half minutes in, when Dan Bailey's pace, and he finishes the 275-pound barbell, and he's about five and a half minutes to finish that last round. It put him about 30 seconds or four lifts ahead of Bjorkman, and that was just enough time because he finished that workout, remember, with just 10 seconds to spare. So 30 seconds on the front end, Allowed him to finish that 275 bar, but plenty of time to finish that workout, and ultimately it gave him the victory. All right, thanks, Tommy. Dan Bailey is one of three men to ever win the Open. Of course, Rich Froning, the other, and Matt Fraser. Bailey trying to get himself onto the podium for the first time in his career in 2016. He's got a long way to go before he can do that, but he makes a very impressive statement tonight in 16.2, and he is standing by with Rory McKernan. Uh, Dan Bailey, yeah. you shot yourself out of a cannon and it paid off in the end. Was that the right strategy? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I saw the work and I knew that a touch and go on the cleans wasn't going to be for me. The clean is, the squat clean especially, I was not pleased to see that come out. It's a uh, weakness for me, but, you know, we've had a mantra going on for the past week at, uh, at Rogue with Josh Bridges that whatever comes out, it's good. doesn't matter if it's bad or not, it's good. A little bit of positive self-talk. Yeah. So were you, uh, when you first saw the workout, you thought of that strategy and you stuck to it. Did you change it all during the midstream? You know, at the beginning, I thought about breaking up the toe to bar because late in the rounds, I knew that that's what was going to catch up. Like your midline is just going to get crushed at 25 around. But I figured, you know, I'd get myself ahead on the clock. I'm pretty good at toe to bar. I can string together some fives, some fours, even when I'm tired. So I stuck with that and it worked out. Great. It looked like you went to a different place, but I don't know what you did and didn't notice about the atmosphere. You mentioned the cold air. What about the people and the atmosphere? Oh, they were going crazy for us. It was phenomenal. I won't be redoing this, I don't think. Uh, the atmosphere definitely helped me on those 315 cleans. Now, we've talked about this before, but you said last year, might have been your last year, you're coming back. What's going to make this year the best year ever for Dan Bailey? 
uh, just, you know, keeping the fire, keeping the passion to compete and working hard. That's really all there is to it. I've been given a gift and I try to use that to glorify God with all that I do. And that means charging through brick walls with head first and, you know, seeing where it gets me. So, yeah. Well, we love watching you charge through brick walls. Great job, Dan Bailey. Hey, let's hear it for both of these athletes, guys. Hey, of course, we can't leave without thanking our amazing hosts, Joel and Tara Hartzler. Thank you, guys. Can we, can we give a round of applause to Joel and Tara? And otherwise, we got to kick you guys out of the garage. That's it for our show. In a couple minutes, we'll do the, the cool-down show brought to you by Arosti. And then, of course, me and Adrian will take the garage for a spin as well. You can see that on CrossFit's Facebook page live. Thanks for joining us, guys. Right now, we're going back to the studio for, for a preview of next week and also a little bit more analysis of 16.2. Thanks, Ro. So there's a lot to be surprised about in that workout. I mean, first of all, I don't know if we thought anybody would finish it, and then the fact that the pace that Dan Bailey started with held up. What surprised you guys the most when you watched that? I mean, i got to admit when I was wrong, I can't believe that we saw one athlete finish it and another one come just within a couple of repetitions. Not that it's not a hard workout, but I thought... We wouldn't see that. This is absolutely incredible. I, I'm just as amazed as you are. And really, I don't care if someone comes out and beats Dan's score. Mm -hmm. to, to me, that is the, the winner of this workout, hands down. To be able to finish that workout yeah. in the environment that he did just minutes after learning it with the cold, the open mm -hmm. garage, just in the middle of nowhere after traveling, that was one of the coolest performances I've ever seen. gets his first open victory. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Dan Bailey is superhuman and obviously not the rest of us. So as far as the 99% of us who are concerned who have no designs on even finishing this workout but just want to get the best score possible, here's Nicole Carroll, the Director of Training and Certification, to give us some tips on how to do that. Sixteen point two has four minute buy-ins with a twenty minute cap. The good news is if you don't need the full four minutes to finish all your work in the early rounds, you can transition right away and bank a little bit of time for those later rounds where you'll be fatigued and the loading gets heavier. Hefty sets of Toto Bar in this workout probably mean we're all going to break them up right from round one. That's okay. Just watch your rest time between sets. Also, on that transition from toe to bar to double under, don't dilly-dally, use it to get composed, get right on those double unders, and get your sets unbroken. Breaking up the double unders will waste precious time. You wanna stay smooth on those, smooth is fast. Breaking up those cleans into fast singles, even on the simple light loads, is probably smart. It will save your grip. When the load on the cleans gets heavy, set up tight, use proper technique, don't get sloppy and punish yourself any more than that load already will. Whether your workout is 4 minutes or 20 minutes, as prescribed or scaled, give this one everything you've got, leave nothing in the tank, go get them, and good luck. Thanks, Nicole. So while everybody is thinking about 16.2, it's never too early to look ahead to 16.3. We're back at an affiliate, but it's going to be a pretty intriguing matchup. For the first time ever, we have a master's athlete and a teenager competitor. Sean Ramirez, the 40 to 44 year old two time champion, taking on Nick Palladino, the 16 to 17 year old champion from the games last year. It's at CrossFit Jacks in Duval, Jacksonville, Florida, the 904. We're coming back there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And this is one of those matchups that I think when you look at the entirety of the Open and who we have on tap, it's probably one of the most intriguing that we have. And it's one of the ones that's so unique to cross it. There are people, okay, Dan Bailey should do what he does. He looks the part, you know, he's young and all this. But then you see somebody 40, 50, over 60. What they do at the games blows your mind. We're going to see that with Sean Ramirez. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have these kids that have grown man strength, yeah. just like Nick Palladino, so it's going to be quite a clash. Yeah, Pat, and just looking at the numbers, you have two champions at opposite ends of the age spectrum, each won four events at the games. 
Ramirez is old enough to be Paladino's fa uh, uh, father. Mm -hmm. uh, that alone is amazing, and the fact we're going to get to see them throw down in front of the world is great. Yeah, Pat, I think you've said it the best. I mean, you have two men who are at you know different right. spectrums on the different age points in their life. Yeah, different, yeah. different spectrums there, but they have numbers that we, when you look at them, you're like, oh, this kid is you know this guy's 25 or this guy's you know 28. They defy their age. We, we heard Nicole Carroll give the people some tips about 16.2. I know you guys are going to be doing this. What comes to your mind as far as a strategy that people should take who are just trying to get a good score here? Just be very honest with yourself. You're going to hit this at home. Maybe the squat cleans at 135 for the guys. 15 is not that bad for you, but you, maybe you should break up the toes bar even to a 10-10-5 a with very short rest. Get into that second round, see how far you can go. You know, being a hero might be costly in the long run. Yeah, and it, along with those toes to, bar, toes to bar being the crux, I really think it's a situation where you, Toy with mixed grips. You know, mm -hmm. we saw that the uh, mm -hmm. both Bjorkman and Dan only yeah. go double overhand, but for many people, switching up the grip is just enough rest on the forearms to save a little bit of grip for the barbell. And if you're a bit uncomfortable with the squat clean, you can power clean it, you know, and then yeah. squat it and drop it That's again. True. So that'll help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready for the cool down show out there in Candler, but before we do that, we're actually going to take some questions via Twitter. The so internet. We're going to interact with the Whoa. people. Okay. So first question, if we can put it up, it comes from Twitter. It's from at MB Cox. Uh, what advice would you give to someone starting their garage gym? What equipment would you begin with? That's a really good question. Yeah, I mean, I've had a garage gym. Here's what I would say. Get yourself a bar. If you have a barbell, mm -hmm. you can usually find something to jump on, or, or you can make a box. Bolt the pull-up bar to the wall. Jump ropes are cheap. Yeah. If you have a barbell, some bumpers, you bolted a pull-up bar up there, you can do the majority yeah. of the workouts. Mm -hmm. And the only thing on top of that is you can go to just about any garage sale and find a cheap pair of dumbbells lying around yep. just to add a little bit of variation. Mm -hmm. There's so much you can do. You can make your own sandbag already. There's right. sky's the limit. Yeah, I, I've put one together myself. I'd say, you know, look for a, a good pull-up bar. Mm -hmm. You don't want to you don't want to go to the cheap on that. But yeah, if you can find a barbell and some bumpers and, and like Pat said, you can always find something to jump on. And, and yeah, don't be afraid to go to those secondhand stores and get stuff. But there's certainly stuff that you, you don't want to yeah, Cut a squat rack on. wouldn't hurt either. Yeah, exactly. All right, one more. Let's take another one via Twitter. And we don't have another question. The Internet's down. The <laughs> Who's broke, manning the internet? the internet? And they're still getting set up for the cool-down show out in Candler. We'll, we'll get you out for that. But l let's go back to 16.2. Uh, to when you saw Dan Bailey break up 135 into singles, what went through your head? That, that's a veteran move right there. Mm -hmm. He can clearly string 15 mm -hmm. together with no problem whatsoever, but that was his long-term play. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I will hold on to the bar for the toes to bar, but I'm going to save my grip a little bit here yeah. on the power cleans, and I would recommend If Dan Bailey does it, Absolutely. most everyone should do it. Without a doubt, and, and I was actually very surprised at how well he stuck to his form throughout the entirety of the barbells. Mm -hmm. Like, for all we say about how well Bjorgman moves, mm -hmm. Dan looked smooth and consistent through all the barbells, even on the 315 when he had to kind of crank it up a notch. He had a good, a good technique, a good position, and you know what? He ended up winning. Let's look ahead a little bit here. Dan Bailey is now on top of the leaderboard as far as 16.2 is concerned, but who are some men whose names come to mind who might be able to chase him down and beat that score? Oh, I mean, it's, I'm obviously Rich Froning. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's so incredibly talented. He's so capable with the barbell. But then I'm going to throw another one at you. I want to see how he does, and I think you'll like this one. That's Jeff Evans. Yeah. Oh, Missed mm -hmm. out in the games mm -hmm. last year. Is offensively strong, <laughs> ridiculously strong. If he can get through those toes bar and get to the barbell, the sky's the limit for him. You know, Matt Fraser automatically comes to mind for me, but another guy who I look at who did well last year on 15.1 mm -hmm. and 15.1A, and that was Nick Yeranker. The guy is strong. He's pretty good with gymnastics. He's, he's more top-heavy than anything else, so top the toes bar shouldn't be too bad. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's a guy who could possibly finish this. Well, we're going to hold you to those predictions. Please do. Please do. We are ready to get you back out to Candler, North Carolina, where the cool-down show is getting ready to start with Roy McKernan, Dave Castro, Bjorvin Gumitsen, and Dan Bailey. All right, welcome back, guys. This is the Cool Down Show brought to you by Arosti. We've got both athletes, and Dave Castro is back from South America. So first and foremost, man, welcome back. It wasn't the same without you last week. Thanks. Um, I had a good time down there. You know, we, we're not able to do these events internationally yet because it'd be a big, 
um, endeavor to take the whole crew down to South America or to Europe. So we got creative and decided we'll keep the team here and do the shows in the US and send just a small group, me and a couple cameras, to South America so we can give some love to the rest of the community because at the end of the day, this is an international sport with a worldwide community. So going to South America and next week, Europe, is important to just show the uh, community that we are global and we, we do care about them. Sure. Speaking of, obviously, we've got a young man from Iceland, and uh, we didn't get to catch up with you after the workout, but Bjork you came so close to the end of the workout. Would you, what would you change if you were going to go do it again? And then are you going to do it again? Yeah, I mean, strategy-wise, it was like the right way for me. It was. Uh, yeah, I just um, <clears throat> failed the double unders, and that cost me a time. So it's only two cleans away. So I'll probably redo the workout. Yes. Okay. One so day. And when we're when we're watching, I don't know what your pace is necessarily or what your rest sequencing is. Did you have something set, or you just went when you could? Uh, no, I had no idea. It was just like by feel. Yeah, and yeah, by feel. Okay. Pretty much. And you guys, Dan, were you guys playing off of each other? You looking at the athlete in the room with you? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to break up my first round of Tota Bar just because it's a lot of Tota Bar to get to the finish, and you're going to start failing no matter what. But uh, when I didn't see him coming off the bar when I got to about 15, it's like, okay, I got 10 more in me. I'll just do all 25. So I think he did too, and that set the pace for the workout. Right on. Okay, we're going to do some social media, and it's going to be a little bit different than we usually do because uh, at home you guys are going to watch this through the studio. I'm going to show you guys just on my cell phone. <coughs> so the first one actually is for Bjorkven, and this one comes from BTA Photos. So I'm going to play you this video while you guys watch along at home. It's Brian Anderson in my own garage gym. My question is to Bjorn. How does CrossFit compare in popularity to other Icelandic sports like team handball or hockey? Thank you. Shout out to CrossFit Murfreesboro. Okay, whenever you're ready. So how popular is, is CrossFit in comparison to other things? And I don't know if field hockey is popular or not, but how popular is CrossFit getting in Iceland? I don't even know what field hockey is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that an then that answers that. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, handball is still like, like handball, football is still like much bigger than CrossFit, but it's getting really known. Okay. So. And uh, mostly because you guys are, are blowing up, you athletes that are doing really well? Yeah, I mean, me, a couple of guys, Annie, Sarah, Katrin, the girls, yeah. So they're pretty much the faces of CrossFit in Iceland. Yeah, and they, uh, they, they are known like for the daughters, right? But you came up this year and made the podium. So is that going to be the future? We're going to see a lot more guys doing well at the games from Iceland? A lot of sons. Yeah, a lot of sons coming? Yeah, a lot of sons coming. <laughs> nice. Uh, Dave, let's talk about programming. You, before this workout, didn't think people would get this far, am I right? You know, I thought the best in the world would get to this point. And, you know, these guys, uh, third and fourth, are the best in the world. So they, they were right on the edge and, uh, of completing. We'll have some other people, not many, but do this slightly faster. And this is, this is the way this, uh, this workout should test out where only the best CrossFitters in the world can get to this point and, and excel. So I don't think many will, but I think a good handful will. Okay, and, and this in comparison to 61, pretty different workouts. When you look at the grand scheme of things, do you take that into account? Do you, oh yeah, for sure. Week? This, um, for, for most people, this is gonna be you know, a four to eight minute workout. <laughs> um, for really good people, it'll be a 12-minute workout, and then and great people, it's going to be a 16-minute and 20-minute workout. This is a lot different from the last one. The last one was a 20-minute um, grind where it was lightweight and you just have to move the entire time. This one has uh, obviously some high weight involved, and you know the, the strength component is the priority here, whereas in the first one, just moving and, and, and keeping that engine going was the most important part. So they, even though for the best guys they have a similar time domain, for the rest of us they have very different time domains. No doubt. Um, so next social media question is going to come to you, Dan. It's from a fellow sprinter. Uh, so we'll play that now on Instagram for you guys at home, and we'll play it for you here, Dan. This is uh, Kristen Hagrid. My question is for Daniel Bailey. Listen, man, I know you're a 400 meter specialist. I actually used to run with Team USA and uh, Adidas International for some time. So those 10 minute, 12, 15, 20 minute plus workouts are really hard for me. So what plan of attack can actually help me in the future, man, being a new CrossFit? Let me 
you can answer that whenever. Yeah, so really it comes down to uh, getting the time in, getting the work in in those time domains with heavy, light, and medium loads. You have to get your body used to it. Coming from a sprinting background, my time domain used to be between 47 and 48 seconds. That was as long as I went um, up to maybe, you know, a minute and a half to a minute to two minutes for like a 600 or an 800 meter dash. So when I first started CrossFit, those eight, 10 minute workouts, even a five minute workout was kind of a drag for me because that was a really long time domain. Um, so really it's just putting the work in, um, knowing that you have to do it, you have to get your body used to it and it'll adapt, your body will figure out what to do. Um, and a lot of people don't know your, your sports background. You played soccer at a high level, correct? Uh, not like high level, but I played soccer for I think 14 years. Uh -huh. And then I did gymnastics for nine or eight or nine years. Not that high level, but still. So gaining this kind of strength, was that the difficulty for you? Or you came with the strength of kind of, you had the lungs, right? Yeah, I mean, I had the lungs, but you know, I've, I've needed to work on my strength for the past couple of years. Cool. All right, we're gonna do one more social media question. This one's a little bit off the wall and it's for all the panelists. So I'm gonna show all you guys simultaneously. It's subtitled, so we're gonna have to actually listen to it. You guys can watch along at home. Who asked the question with subtitles? So, there it is. Yep. So, um, I got you. Yes. It's a tough choice because this workout's got a mix of. Something I know you've been working on, which is the bodybuilding and some heavier lifting. <laughs> I know Boz has been taking his time with his engine. He's a very good gymnast. Don't look at him when you answer. Um, right now, I'm going to give the nod to Boz, though. Oh. Oh. One to one. No pressure, bro. No pressure. You always show up for the regionals in Europe, right? So it's you. Yes, my oh. man. Just got to show up, show up and blow up. Um, we're gonna call it, Dave. Unless you got any parting thoughts, you want to give these guys in the uh, in the garage, North Carolina. Shout out to everyone. Thank you guys. Wide. Thank you all for coming. This has been a great um, great event. You guys are great hosts, Asheville. Thank you for uh, letting us crash your little town. Thank you. Dan, Bjorkvin, Dave, thank you guys. It was an amazing show. Thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy 16.2, and we'll see you next week from the Dirty South.